are facing a, a time that is very difficult for our farmers, not only them, but for the whole population uh, all over the, the world. Uh, this is related to COVID-19 effect that uh, is going to have on everybody. And uh, because we are in the farming business, we talk about what is going to be uh, the impact on us, especially on our farmers. Uh, as pointed out by, by uh, some researchers at the University of uh, Wisconsin, Madison, uh, there are going to be six major things to look uh, for in the farming community. Uh, the first one being the market and uh, uh, farm prices. And this is related to the recommendations from uh, CDC that uh, we should keep distance, uh, social distancing, uh, wearing masks and all these things. Uh, that are going to affect the uh, the ability of people to interact with each other. So that's going to have uh, a major effect on uh, uh, food pricing. And the second thing we should be uh, watching for is going to be the supply chain to slow down. If you need the fertilizer from uh, point A to point B, you may not get it on time. Farm equipment and all these things, you should be aware of that. The third thing is gonna be farmers' health. Their health is gonna be important. If they are not healthy, they cannot grow any crop. And uh, if they can grow the crop, then that means we're gonna have shortage. That means the price of the crop or of the produce is going to be more expensive on the on the market. Those we know that the most of our farmers are uh, older compared to workers in other sectors of the economy. Uh, the the average uh, age is about fifty eight, and uh, as pointed out by uh, CDC, if you are over sixty you are more likely to have complications from uh, COVID-19 uh, with uh, maybe hospitalizations. Or the other thing is going to be students or children who are in school age, their schools are closed down. So they might have to stay home to take care of their children or their family. Uh, the, the fourth thing is that we should be looking at we also uh, farm workforce. If uh, you don't have uh, uh, work farm workers, uh, you cannot harvest, you cannot plant, and you cannot do cultivation. And you, a lot of your activities are going to be uh, disrupted. So you need to keep that also in mind. The, the fifth thing is uh, Worker safety and PPE. Uh, we know that uh, during the time where you are doing uh, you are doing plowing and all these things, you need to usually you put on uh, gloves or you put on masks. And uh, we know that uh, N N95 is uh, uh, in shortage now. So that also is something that may affect your activities. And other disruptions are going to be related to internet availability, especially that the courses uh, for your for the farmer students are going to be online. And most of our farming community do not, do not have high speed internet connection. So those are things that you have to keep in mind as farmers that are going to go into uh, a, uh, your seasonal activity this year. Uh, so those are the things that you, as, a, as farmers, you need to keep in mind and watch out for. But uh, uh, focusing on our activity, activities of on a project is uh, that uh, uh, this is the third year that uh, we are working with you guys. 
and uh, this is the last year of the these activities. Uh, what we want to do is uh, uh, we want to uh, go over again uh, the planting and the harvesting or how you care for your, your crop during the, uh, the growing, uh, growing season. So we have uh, Margaret from uh, University of, uh, uh, from uh, North Carolina State University, uh, who is gonna, who is the, uh, uh, is very generous and wanted to uh, go over this uh, uh, planting and harvesting uh, activities. Uh, and we, we thank her for uh, uh, accepting to, 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 to conduct these, uh, uh, online uh, presentation today. Uh, and I want to thank all our collaborators from uh, uh, ASAN, Auburn University, Mississippi State, uh, I'll, uh, which one is also North Carolina State University and my colleagues at the Tuskegee University for uh, uh, participating in this uh, online uh, presentation and uh, we want to welcome Margaret and uh, uh, to start her presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. K and everyone. It looks like we have a, a few more participants now joining us. Um, it's great to see you, even if it's in a different platform and uh, we hope this information can be timely and useful. Uh, excited to kick off the third season of the on-farm trials, as Dr. Case said, and we want this information to be useful and timely and for you to be able to participate in a way that's uh, useful for your farm too. So we'll go through a short presentation today um, and I welcome input from the rest of our team here, especially as it regards to specifics of crop details and how things are going with some of our earliest plantings. I think everyone's received their grower data logs and their information packets, as well as their seeds by now uh, from the Tuskegee group. Uh, so we will go over those data logs and how they fit into planting tips and further on into harvest considerations. If you have questions about particular crops, again, we'll open that to the whole team. Uh, just very basic information uh, is covered in the slides. Uh, if you have your grower data logs available and you're a grower, it might be good to pull one out. Um, I'm not sure how well you can see the, the copy of this one on the page. Uh, but just to orient ourselves. Uh, page one, we can fill out as the season begins and we're plotting out our uh, crop plants. You're going to have your GPS coordinates, your basics of where you are, and your plot details and sites. Soil types, and this is all consistent with what we've done in the past. Um, I'm not sure if we have any new growers on. I think we're all um, continuing, so. Moving right on to page two of those grower data logs are the planting details. And again, you're gonna fill this out for each crop. This is gonna cover seedling info if you're starting those um, to grow transplants or if you're direct seeding and through information we'd like about plant stand uniformity. The third page, before we get into some of the individual crops, uh, we wanna reference the crop, or back one there, the pest and disease log. So when something happens, please take note of it here and we can keep in line. If you need extra help on how to do a treatment or do preventative, please contact your team. And if you're a North Carolina or South Carolina grower, I know uh, Janine and I have interacted with you and we've got almost the whole team here. So covering all our states. Photos are very useful. So uh, in addition to the grower data logs for disease and insects and all of that, uh, photos and ways of sharing online are, are easier than ever. That can also be a way that your extension agent or a member of the project team can help you with an issue, if that's an insect or pest. So here are the main four crops of the project. You each uh, have second crops or challenge crops as well. So we won't cover all of those challenge crops today, but we'll go through the main four to begin. And here's some examples of some of our um, on-farm trials in North and South Carolina, primarily from 2019. So 
you may see yourself or your farm on there. So for squash planting, we want to ensure that how you're laying out that plot on the varieties meets the project specification, specifications. This is all information you can put into your grower log as well for when for the depth that you're seeding, your in-row spacing, and how that's laid out. And to note that in the case of earlier plantings, uh, plastic mulch and row covers can aid there as a preventative organic physical barrier. These are some of the main varieties that are grown um, across the region as part of the project, both on farms and on stations. Another easy way to record and a reminder, if you have an issue, please record it on that sheet and contact your team. That can be as simple as a, a photo and uh, an email. So when it comes to harvest, that might be a little ways out for uh, most of us now, but again, uh, harvest consistent with your farm and market protocol. It's important to get the food out there, especially in times like now and our small growers. Uh, but of course, with each harvest, make sure you're filling out that grower data log. So we have general harvest recommendations for the length and diameter. And again, that's going to be somewhat dependent on the variety of squash. And some ideas to um, harvest from full bloom for those main varieties. You'll also have uh, marketable and unmarketable yields to record. And that's what the picture is illustrating there on the slide um, as we're grading. Do we have any questions or comments on squash before moving on? Okay, so for tomatoes, again, um, basic information and a lot of this will affect where you are. So I didn't put planting dates or anything on there because our uh, range is so great with this amazing partnership across the southeast. But generally um, from transplant, we're starting those in greenhouse six to eight weeks prior. Again, ensuring that plot layout meets your project specifications and is recorded by picture and documented on your grower log. In row spacing, between row spacing, and of course some basic planting information there. Uh, trellising is common in most all of our areas now um, and the plastic culture versus bare ground is dependent on uh, your farm. This is Bioway Farm in South Carolina. Here's some of the varieties we're growing. Celebrity uh, Mountain Magic developed here in North Carolina and Rocky Top. So again, please do your harvest of your tomato fruits consistent with your farm and market, uh, but ensure that each yield is recorded on the grower data log for marketable and unmarketable for our research trials or harvesting fruits when they begin to ripen and going all the way through the uh, end of the season. So another once over. We're starting to see some great cowpea uh, results coming in and uh, they're relatively new for our growers um, in the Western part of North Carolina where Janine and I are located, but this has been fun to work with um, and we're learning a lot from our, our partners further south on this one. Um, so some basic information here, it's going to go in a little bit later than our earlier crops. Um, we can plant it all the way through July up here. Please make sure those plot layouts meet the specifications and keep your spacing consistent. Uh, recording this information ahead of time can make things much more easy when you're sending in your packets during harvest season. Here are the main varieties grown for the trial. And have a lot of new, um, new and old varieties becoming available again uh, in regards to southern peas or cow peas in the region. So keep a lookout for that if that's a crop that you have been growing or have more interest in expanding. So for the southern peas, uh, we are going to record our yield, same as the other crops on our data logs um, and some basic recommendations regarding harvest. Uh, we harvest when pods are changing color and those uh, pods have really filled in. It's the shelling stage. 
Uh, so most of our growers are growing for that. We may have some dry peas out there. And again, with some of these varieties, they are good for both markets. And our final main crop is sweet potatoes. Do we have growers here that are growing sweet potatoes for the project this year? Not any home call, but we've got a few sweet potato growers this year. Great. Uh, so this is one, especially in organic management, you want to plan ahead of with your weed management. Um, again, making sure that your plot layout meets project specifications. We're probably whizzes at that by now. Um, and waiting till that soil warms up for the sweet potatoes as well. Here's some beautiful pictures of um, the main source of our trial uh, slips, as well as the variety selections, Garnet, Orleans, and Covington. And for the sweet potato harvest, looks like one of my tables isn't popping up here, but the days after planting for specific varieties are usually the indicator we do for harvest there. Um, and you'll see that the plants begin to senesce um, as well in, the, in that long season crop. If you haven't heard it enough by now, please ensure that you become familiar with these grower data logs. Um, they can be easy tools and provide a lot of good information that can in turn um, help all the growers in the region uh, through this project and other efforts. Um, regarding unmarketable harvests, uh, note those reasons because those can aid in problem solving for the region's crops as well. And that's a picture of one of our uh, on research station trials as part of the project in 2018. Uh, and that's what our squash field looked like. So here they are. Um, we've got the grower data logs. There's a harvest data log for squash on the left side of the screen and then another one for your challenge crop. So those challenge crops are gonna be different for us from okra to lettuce to cauliflower. I'm not sure what other neat challenge crops we have going this year. Um, but these are what those logs will look like. A good idea to just have those on hand so when things get busy, you can include them as part of your recording. Here's another thing that we do as part of the project in addition to the on-farm trials and on uh, research station trials. There's uh, Dr. Davis and I and a group doing uh, kind of an in-field uh, insect scouting and um, showing of our trials. So just to give you an idea of what we're doing over here in uh, Western North Carolina as part of the project and extension. Uh, Margaret? Yes, Dr. K. Uh, will it be possible for you to go back to the previous slides and then uh, show our growers how to fill up those, uh, those uh, uh, pages? Yes, sir. Because it, uh, when I, I think a lot of uh, uh, you guys have uh, looked at the, some of the data logs. And uh, uh, I think Dr. Motley is there. I look at them and uh, most of our concern uh, was in the area of how these forms are filled in. So I think that uh, it might be a good idea to go over it uh, so that the, the growers can uh, see or know how to. Sure. How to yeah. Thank you. And I, I could even put up an example of uh, one that we consider well filled in. So while okay. I'm doing that, um, maybe I'll open it up to any questions um, specific to the presentation uh, or from any growers regarding the, the data logs. Hi, Margaret. This is Leslie. I just wanted to um, let you know that along with the grower data logs and the crop layout guide, the growers should also have received a, a sheet of the harvest guidelines that you all developed um, together. And so all the growers should have those harvest guidelines in print uh, with their other materials. Just wanted to throw that out there. That's great, Leslie. And if I can find it quickly, I can uh, share that on the screen for folks to view um, if they don't have their packages in front as well. Uh, so let's just go ahead and look at this harvest uh, yield data log for squash on the left side of the screen. Are you able to see my cursor? 
Thank you, Janine. Uh, so this is the same as it has been in years past. And again, um, emphasizing the point of bringing this to every harvest, which is more important for things that you're harvesting uh, multiple times a week, like squash and throughout the season. Uh, but this, without having a full picture, uh, the data is less useful. So this can be filled in for you. And oftentimes it, it is with your particular varieties. But my recommendation is to go ahead and fill out these logs with all the information, except that's what's needed on day of harvest. So you'll fill in squash here. Let's say we have gentry and we have a uh, blocky green here. So uh, marketable and cull is designated here and we're doing how many, um, what our weight is in pounds by row. So if we have our our plot layout in front of us, we're going to have three rows each of those varieties. And if we're down here in the box for harvest number one, we can fill in our date here. In the example, it is uh, August 15th. And the weight of our marketable in row one was one pound. And we had four pounds of culls. Sounds like some early terrible squash problems. Anyway, then we'll go and do the same thing for row two and row three and go that way. Once you have a hang of that for each harvest, it can be uh, uh, ever more useful. Is that straightforward for the, the growers online? I can see uh, someone's shaking, not in their head. Yes, it's good. Awesome. If you'll unmute yourself, Muja. You have three rows of squash next to each other and I, I thought it was like two and then one of a different one so that's a bit confusing for me. Great question. So you'll have a, a plot map that's corresponding to your rows one, two, and three. So you're going to have three rows of each line, right? Whether it's a gentry crookneck, gentry crookneck, gentry crookneck, or another um, arrangement. Uh, so yeah, you'll want to have just as long as you're recording for the same row, the same way on your map each time. It's okay. So if you want to, does that make sense? And once you have your plot maps in, if you have a question about how to record, uh, we can go over that uh, for your individual plot map. And please do keep the questions coming. We want this to be as uh, simple as possible. Can we can we bring in the the map? Leslie, do you like, have a plot map able to screen share? Um, I, I can will, email one to myself. I'm just working two screens right now at the home yeah, office. Yeah, sure thing. Let me, <laughs> let me let me try to pull that up real quick. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, we keep getting back and forth there. So these harvest yield logs will come into place uh, as we uh, progress in the season and we may be nearing some harvest for the early crops further south now. Um, if you have questions about your particular map or where to put the information, do let us know. Uh, we have uh, modified a lot of different on-farm research uh, data collection so that we can all make it work. Uh, hi, Margaret. This is Desmond here. Um, Hello. Could you, could you, hi, could you please go back to the first page in the data log here? Because one of the problems we ran into, there was a lot of inconsistency as it relates to the area that was planted. Thought I'd seen it. I don't have a copy in front of me. Right, here, um, because there were quite a disparate um, a number of different planting distances. And I thought the farmers were supposed to, at least the, the part for data collection for the project was to cover 15 feet. Is that correct? 15 feet of row. 
however, the the I I did call a few farmers um, from last uh, growing season, and the two or three I spoke to just harvested everything. So it it it, it made it a little bit difficult to um, to calculate yield on a consistent basis. So that's one of the things I'd love to see improve this year. You know, if if we are going 15 feet, are they going to harvest? You know, the, the total number of plants on the row, or we designate X number of plants. You know, leaving one or two or a couple guard plants, and you harvest 11 or 10. So we have to be consistent on that. Very good point. Thank you, Desmond. And I see that uh, we've shared, we've got the uh, the map out and f following that I will pull up the harvest recommendations, which is going to cover that plot length information as well for the different crops. Um, Thanks, Margaret. Sure. Dr. Kumbrooke, this is what you, this is what you wanted me to pull up. This is, this, is this is representative of Muja's question as well. So this is uh, a great Leslie. And then okay. I, I'll pull up and the harvest I'm recs next. Yes. And do you want me to go ahead and uh, you're going to have to click share screen again? Mm -hmm, no problem. Okay. Yeah, it's on, we're seeing it. No, I, I think that you should, you should explain this one first. All right. What, what is this block one, block two, block three? And then the, the A, B here. So. I think the confusion for her, if if you are not in agriculture, uh, really uh, not used to these randomization things, she is seeing in the data log, say, feel like row one, row two, row three, they are next to each other. But then in the crop map here, they are not next to each other. Understood. How do you see what? what the confusion can be for the farmers. I do see that and how we could make that more clear uh, moving forward. Uh, Muja, in this case, you would have one, your A's might be your gentry for squash, for example, one, two, three. But again, we can line this up on um, your drawn map for your specific crop. And also, um, I understood that um, as long as we measured and marked off the 15 could have two rows of 15 feet in the same row as long as they were designated. And, but then when it comes time to record it, you want to know how many, how many tomatoes are harvested in a 15 feet distance, right? That's correct, ma'am. Oh, no, 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 not on the, on the 15 feet. I think right. what what uh, Desmond was uh, referring to that few minutes ago is not all the 15 feet that you need to to record. Desmond, can you go back and explain that, please? Right, right. So if you are, you know, say you have 15 plants on a row, say on a 15 foot row, then I'm suggesting that we harvest the middle 10 or 11. We can decide on that and leave the two, the two uh, on either end as your guard plants. And, uh, and then you, the, the, the data you'll report then would be on the 10 or 11 plants once we decide on it here um, for the yield. Now, for your purposes, you can harvest the other two rows for sale or whatever else you want to do with it. But for the data, we just want it from those 10 plants or 11 plants, whatever we decide on here. Okay. Okay, I understand that. And again, the 15 feet is a, maybe different for the different crop. Exactly, good point. So yes. here is the harvest guidelines that was also in your package of documents for the specific crops, because sometimes the layout can be confusing when we transfer it to another crop. So, um, so here is where you're talking about marking your plot and recording that in your grower data log so that your harvest yield log and your grower data log will match. That's, that's important to...
Here are some recommendations specific to Southern P. Mostly concerning how long to harvest following the best shelling stage. Great. And again, if you have a specific crop plot question about how much of the row to harvest or which rows should correspond to different uh, recording on the data sheets, please let us know because it may make more sense if we uh, show you on a case by case basis with your plot plan. Oh, yeah, are you are you satisfied with the answer? Yes, I am. But I, I would also love for um, you know um, for someone to come out and um, actually look at how I've staked things off. Um, maybe go through it with me again. Okay, we can do that. We can send some uh, one of our uh, uh, a student to to work with you on uh, establishing the plot. Okay, that'd be fantastic. Okay, just let us know on time so that we can plan for it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, I am going to pull up a resource slide at the end of this um, slides here and open up for further questions regarding plants or also just discussion. I'd love to hear from any of the growers of where you're at with your trials and um, any other thing you want to share while we're all here. Uh, this is uh, Koko Ase here. Uh, I think that one of the things that we did not realize at the beginning of this project is that not all growers are familiar with conducting uh, experiment for research purposes. Uh, I see that not all of not not all the growers are on the same level. Uh, when you look at the data logs, you realize that growers in North Carolina. Uh, some South Carolina and Tennessee, they are well trained to collect research data. So you see the way they, they report is completely different from farmers, for instance, or growers from, uh, from Alabama, for instance. So that's one thing that we did not uh, realize at the beginning. We should have probably uh, convene a training session uh, with these growers so that they can all be at the same level. Uh, so there is a, we are talking about, we are having some discussions about how to, uh, how to get these farmers trained. And uh, I was having some discussion with uh, Janine uh, about this. So this, this is something that uh, we probably need to take into consideration. But again, with all these confined, uh, with these COVID-19 issues, uh, it's gonna be a little bit challenging. And maybe we have to find a way to do that online uh, and uh, find also a way to make sure that all the growers, especially those uh, who are not very familiar with how to conduct this research, we can do it, uh, as a, you know, real time uh, data collection, go in the field, put the stick here, measure the, the distance and show them exactly how to do that. But if by the end of the season, if uh, uh, this restriction uh, related to COVID-19 are removed, maybe, maybe we can uh, do that at uh, uh, North Carolina State at, uh, with Jenny and I. We have been talking about this before, so. Jenny and I, I'm sure that you are still uh, with us on that, huh? Uh, yes. And I'd like to point out also that not just for doing it for the university, 
but farmers knowing how to do these kind of little studies on the farm for their own purposes is really valuable. And I think that's why in the Carolinas and Tennessee, where we have um, a lot of our farmers have gone to many meetings where they've learned about this, like through Carolina Farm Stewardship, they have learned the value of doing their own on-farm tests and understand why replications are so important. So not just for our own purposes, but I'd like the Alabama farmers to, to know how to do this for their own use. Thank you. And uh, we are thinking about, uh, you know, writing a proposal to, to address those issues specifically for farmers who are not familiar with this, because this is a capacity building issue. Mm -hmm. You cannot uh, launch uh, well, you cannot launch uh, a project like this to collect data from farms to support organic agriculture if you don't have research data. And it's key research data that are well conducted, research that are well conducted uh, will, uh, will meet our, uh, uh, our desire, you know, to have reproducible uh, information that we can uh, share with our growers so that they can uh, participate in this kind of uh, uh, research and data. idea. My sound went down just a little bit. Is anyone talking right now? Um, does this sound okay? Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if, if nobody has anything else to say right this second, or Dr. Pumbaku, if you're finished, um, I just wanted to run through a couple of these housekeeping, you know, kind of from from project headquarters, these housekeeping uh, points here that all of our growers should have received in uh, the letter that they that they got with their grower data logs and their seeds. This is just a reminder to please send your first check-in postcard um, as soon as you plant your crop number one. Let us know what's going on. Just think about those stages. You know, you're you're planting. Uh, maybe you're transplanting, um, you're harvesting at least once a month for four months is really all we're asking, uh, kind of checking in with the project. A lot of y'all were really on point with that. Um, so thank you for that. Also, as Margaret said um, already, the photos, 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 especially when we're dealing with pests, as, as good as you can get in there and, and get a close up photo, uh, the more helpful. Also, um, and this is a really big one, please protect your crops from deer and other grazers. We can't get to the end of the season and say, we don't have any harvest, uh, you know, we don't have any yield because the deer ate it all. So we need to go ahead and right at the beginning, make whatever efforts we need to, to protect the crops. Um, also, I know that's easier said than done, but the effort definitely has to be uh, made ahead of time. Um, and let us know if there's any uh, issue with that. Also, um, just please revisit your, you know, your agreement. Uh, we want to get everyone paid and we want to get these stipends out and we, we definitely need the data as Dr. K has already uh, kind of gone through. We need that research data. Um, contact your main project contact and copy organic at tuskegee.edu on any emails that you send and Please make sure your grower data log is complete and that's it for me. Does anybody else have any other reminders? Margaret, thank you so much for an awesome presentation. Um, I think that fit just perfectly with the information that the growers received in the mail. Um, I just wanted to let everyone know if, if, there, if, if you're missing seeds um, or if there's any other issue, uh, you know uh, how to get a hold of me right here, organic at tuskegee.edu is the quickest way. And thanks so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, thank you so much for uh, uh, NC State Crew for hosting uh, this uh, first uh, online uh, presentation. Thank, thank you, Margaret.
We'll Thanks. see you all on Tuesday, right? See you there. The board meeting. That's right. Okay. Great That's to see you. Good job, Margaret. Thank you. Good job. Bye -bye. Thanks.